Hello, hello, everybody. We're doing just a chill stream today, drawing on skits. Just wanted to give everyone a little updates. You know, skits is still going live on Indiegogo. Uh, go over there and back us. We're over 12 grand, and uh, we're just moving right along. Anyway, uh, go over there and check it out. Get that three-book journey. Uh, it's three books, three covers with three variant stories. All right. Anyway, let's get into this. I wanted, I, I shared this drawing right here and people really, really responded to this. And this is just a style that I'm going to be doing in, in the skits book. And I thought it'd be cool to kind of do a little drawing like this and to show y'all exactly how it's done. Now, this is the last page that I worked on. This is uh, skits coming down off the mountain right here. Lots of fun, lots of fun. So let's put this off to the side. I don't think that's going to stay up there. I need to use another piece of tape. There we go. Okay, so here's the page I'm working on right now. I've gotten it all sketched out. And what we're going to do is we're going to work on this top panel right here. But I figure I might as well go ahead and show you all the whole thing here. Got Black Star in the chat. Boom. Look at that. I can actually click on it. I'm doing this from the cell phone, so that's why I'm kind of amazed at whether or not some of this stuff works or not. So there you go. Cool. Yeah, it's just easier to do it from the cell phone than trying to get your computer and bringing it over to the artboard, setting up uh, cameras and all that other stuff. Your cell phone works so good, so it's nice that StreamYards allows you to do this now. So, uh, one of the earlier, I think it was the last uh, live one we did, I, I showed you, I actually drew this page out live uh, in the computer, thumbnailed it, and uh, I transferred it to the paper, and now we're actually just drawing it. You know, I, I sketched it all in, tightened it up a little bit, and now we're going to show you exactly how I do that technique. So, let me... Pull this down into the camera view, a little bit lower, oh, maybe a little higher. Let me just make sure it's good and centered there for y'all. All right, tapes there. And again, this is, you know, the style that I'm going to be doing this in right there. So if y'all have any questions, I'll be looking up, uh, see if I got anything in the chat from time to time. Let me just get a little comfortable here. Um, at the table and let's get started so the way I start these pieces is I want to work from the background to the foreground okay so in my background I'm going to use just my old uh, Tombow 2H pencil in the background with a stump okay now you can do this multiple different ways. You can sketch it and then do it with the stump. You can put your stump on the lid, you know, like this and do whatever, you know, get it started, which I'm going to actually, I already have some lid on this. So I'm just going to get it started in the background and then move into the mid grounds and foregrounds. So let's see, we got Eric McIntyre there. Hello. How's it going, man? Thanks for stopping by. So go ahead and get started with this. I'm just gonna start roughing in some areas here. See what whatever's left on the stump from the previous drawing, and just get started with that. Putting some stuff in. I I'm probably gonna be doing this with a graphite a graphite powder here soon. I tried to go to the local art store and get some. No one has any. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous. Chill, it's 95, or I, mean, I know it's 92 here, I believe. So 91, 92 here. It's hot. It is really hot, man. <laughs> yep, I hear you. Uh, Kino Subway, hello. Eric McIntyre, hey, hey, hey. So I'll keep looking up every few minutes, and uh, so holler at me in the chat. So I'm just going to get started with this 2H, and I'm just going to start you know, roughing in the background, and it doesn't have to be perfect right now. I'm just kind of filling it out. 
you know. And this is going to be trees. You know, he's come down off the mountain, and he's going towards a forest now. So I, I, it doesn't have to be perfect necessarily. I just need to kind of start getting it in there and uh, getting some shapes and, you know, I can work the eraser back into it. I, you can do so many things in this technique right here to get mark making and, because that's, in my opinion, mark making is super important for, for any sort of drawing. And what I like to do is wherever the center of focus is going to be, I want that to have detail, like highest amount of detail. And whatever's furthest away from where I want the eye to go, that's where I'm going to have my least amount of detail. So my most amount of detail is going to be right here on this character. And away from that, you know, the further away from him, the less detail there's going to be. You know, that's exactly how I did that piece. And that's how we're going to do this piece. All right. So let's get in here, start making some little mark making that we might find is like trees and stuff in the background. And then we're also going to do some clouds. So we'll have to put some clouds in there all in the background. But it doesn't have to be exactly right. The fun thing about this is you can kind of play around and see what you get. I, you know, when people work in the computer, they say, Oh, you know, I, I don't want to, or actually when you're working on a piece of paper, you're afraid of making marks because you might mess up. Well, that's not the way you want to do it. You kind of want to mess up and then go back in and fix it. That's how you make some of your most interesting marks, you know? So I actually like to go in here and just start making marks and see what I get and then work from those marks. If you remember when I was laying this page out, all I did is just build shapes. And then I went back and made my characters and my story fit to the shapes because I knew the shapes were strong. And I knew that was going to work really well. So there you go. I'm kind of doing the same thing here. I'm just going to make some marks and just see where we can go from there. All right. So I'm guessing it's hot pretty much everywhere around the country now. I mean, it's hot here. It's hot up north. And uh, summer is well on its way it actually stayed cool a little bit later this year you know like middle of june it was still a little cool which i liked I, I, my my wife didn't like it so much she likes the heat but i loved it where we live right now this is the furthest north that i've ever lived and uh you know i really really enjoy having seasons when you're born and raised in florida you know, we don't really have seasons in florida we got cold days and then the rest of the year is kind of warm and hot and muggy and nasty and uh but you know if that's all you know that's fine and i grew up in florida with no ac in the house my parents had ac in their house but i didn't in my bedroom <laughs> they, they had it in their uh, bedroom rather the rest of the house didn't have AC. So growing up in Florida with no AC, that was a, and we had some, some uh, place heaters when it got cold. And it does get cold in Florida. People think like, oh, it's Florida. It never gets cold. Heck, if it doesn't, it gets colder than heck in Florida. People don't know. All right, so I think that's a good rough start for that background. I'm going to start moving into the, mountains and hills here now i want to kind of get like a, a bit of a hard edge right there right this would be cool and i got this stone here there we go and we got another stone up over here and what this is is we kind of got uh that's too much it's like two of the same thing i'm gonna erase that and make it a little smaller it looks like I'm trying to do the same thing on both sides there, and I don't, I don't want to do that. I want variety. Variety is really important in your drawings. You want to keep variety in there. And when I say variety, what I'm meaning is I had this stone sticking up here, 
And then I had this one almost at the same height if you go across the paper. So I lowered it down so it's not the same height. You get some variety there at different angles. And also, one of the easiest ways to create depth in your drawing is to do repeated patterns. So I got this big stone here, this middle stone here, and then this small stone here. And what it's doing is it's showing depth. You know, that, that little trick right there shows depth in your drawings. So that's just something we're doing there. And again, when uh, when you're doing atmospheric perspective, uh, you're actually, the tops of things will be dark and then it fades to light as it goes down to the next shape that's in front of it, which this area right here will be dark and then it'll fade and then this will be dark and then it'll fade to this one. And if you ever live in a place where there's mountains, you'll notice this if you actually go out and look that the tops will be like really, really dark and then it'll fade to a lighter shade as it gets down to the thing that's in front of it. That's darker because it's closer to you. That's the whole idea of atmospheric perspective is things get uh, lighter in color, lighter in shade as they uh, get away from you. You tend to get more blues and greens as it gets away from you in space. All right, let's just kind of put this down as a beginning here. And again, this is a technique that I don't really, there's not really too many people doing it in comics. You know, everyone's all about the ink and uh, making everything, you know, but, you know, skits has really got some depth and perspective to it. And I want the artwork to reflect that. It's kind of airy. It's, um, there's a lot going on and it's very, you know, supposed to be very dreamlike. So I want to have that type of feeling in it. Video focus is going in and out. Okay. It might be because my hand's in front of it. I'll keep an eye on that. Just let me know if uh, that happens more. Let me put it at a little more of an angle like this. And uh, maybe that'll help it because the hand won't be right in the middle. I think what it is, is the hand is at a higher level and it's in the middle. So it's focusing on that. And it's got that auto focus. That's just something you deal with with iPhones, I guess. There we go. Okay, let me get this side as well over here. And I'm not really worried about mark making as in like, you know, your cross hatching or anything like that right at this moment but I'll get back into that once I get some shades down. Basically all I'm doing right now is I'm just getting the, the rough shades in. I'm doing my light shades and I wanna get a differentiation between the background and the foreground. And then I'll go in and start doing the details and everything after I get that in there. But that's why I'm using the 2H because I'm doing all the background stuff. Once I get to the mid ground, I'll probably switch over to the F pencil, or you could just use an H or an HB. HB and F are about the same if you're looking at your pencil uh, grades. Uh, the hardness and softness that is. HB and F are pretty much like right in the middle of your uh, gradients. So it's like a 50% gray. If you, if you want to think of it that way in terms of computer talk. This is going to be a really fun page, and I'm really excited about doing this drawing style, to be perfectly honest with y'all. Like I said, no one's really doing this. It's something that, uh, if I was to go back and actually see different types of people who do this, you know, like if I wanted to throw out some names, some names would be like Frazetta. Frazetta did this style with his pencil work. Um, a lot of the, you know, if, if I'm thinking about pencil work in comic books, really, you know, I'm trying to think in comic style. You get a lot of this in concept art, you know, a lot of concept artists will do this. But uh, 
Oh, uh, Blade of the Immortal. If anyone knows Blade of the Immortal, the uh, manga, his drawing style is very much like this. I'm a huge fan of Blade of the Immortal. If if I was to take the last like 20, 30 years of comic booking and I looked at artists that have been consistent in doing art over the years, I'd probably have to say Blade of the Immortal is one of my absolute favorites art-wise. His work, uh, what's his name? Uh, I can never remember his name. It's hard for me to remember these names. I think the guy's Korean, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, he may be Japanese, I'm not sure, but his art is just amazing. Another thing is I, I collect artwork from comic book artists I like. You know, I, I try and buy art as much as possible. And the manga artists, man, they will not get rid of their artwork for nothing. They will never sell that stuff. So it kind of sucks, you know. I'd really like to buy some of that stuff. I'd love to have some Blade of the Immortal original art, but he just doesn't sell it, you know. Yeah, Blade of the Immortal, Tony Sizzle. Hey, thanks for stopping by, Tony Sizzle. Blade of the Immortal is amazing. It, it's an amazing manga. I think they got, they're putting out omnibuses of it now. Uh, the original graphic novel or the mangas, there was, you know, the little pamphlets. They're about this thick. They had um, maybe 30 of them. There's like 30 of them. And then uh, the omnibuses, they're on like number 10 right now. And the omnibuses are like this thick. You know, they sell them at Barnes and Noble if, if you're interested in checking them out. Um, Blade of the Immortal is just incredible. They also have a, a anime of it as well. I haven't looked at it. Um, just because I mainly look at Blade of the Immortal for the artwork. To tell you the truth, I haven't read it in probably 20 years. But I, I just love the artwork so much, I always buy them. You know? But yeah, go check out Blade of the Immortal. His, his artwork's incredible. And it's, he, he has a style that's very much the same as this. But then he'll also, he'll do pages that are penciled like this. And then the next panel next to it, you know, this one right here will be all inked. But it'll have this pencil shading underneath the inks. And it, and it just looks incredible. So, go check it out. I highly recommend it. But, and of course, like I said before, for Zeta. You know, he would do a style like this. Uh, and for is, you know, when it comes to fantasy art and comic booking, there's no one better, in my opinion. You know, out of all the old greats and stuff, he's, he's bar none one of the best. I mean, you count on maybe three fingers, some of the best people, and he's one of them three. So, go check him out as well, too. If you don't know who Frank Frazetta is, go check him out. I always gotta, always gotta remember I'm a little older than most people who are probably in the comics watching stuff on YouTube. You know, I'm in my forties, and these are just people that you grew up, you know, with. Frazetta, Jeff Jones, Bernie Wrights, and Michael Michael Kaluta. He's another one. He does a, a style like this. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, he's done work like this. And again, we're just trying to, I'm just trying to get a good shade over the entire thing. And if you have a powdered graphite, it makes this whole process go a lot quicker, which is something I have on order. I've tried to get it from the local art store here, but the last few times I've been to the art store here, man, they just don't have anything. It's like they're out. Like I went to go and get some white paint and they're like, oh yeah, all the white paint's out because we the paint companies they can't get any uh was it titanium they can't get the titanium for the whites so and i was like well what about the other whites that don't use titanium why don't you have them and they they couldn't give me an answer <laughs> it was like maybe people are just you can't get paint period i don't know 
but I just thought it was funny. They're like, yeah, titanium. I was like, well, there's lots of other lights that don't have titanium in them. Why don't you have them? It's like, well, I don't know. Okay. Well, it happens. You just don't know sometimes. But I don't know. With all the virus stuff going on, it's, ah, who knows? Who knows what's going on? Yep, we have three Frazettas in great condition. Well, we got a, we got some Frazettas. That's definitely for sure. All right, let me move back over here to Skits. All right. Yeah, it's getting blurry. It looks fine to me. I, you know, it's the. I think it's just the hand getting in front of it that's the problem right now. But let me uh let me get the F here pencil. Let me. You know, it doesn't really matter what you're doing here when it comes to live YouTubing. It seems like no matter what you do when you're doing live, something will go wrong. <laughs> I haven't figured out the formula. Like we've been doing it for like six to nine months now I and mean, there's always problems it doesn't matter you know sometimes the internet's terrible sometimes this is bad and it's just like gosh man why can't we just why can't things just work you know but now the phone wants to be blurry i've done this several times in those other ones and i the phone the picture didn't get blurry so i just don't i don't know man it's like wanting to do this autofocus thing right now. But, yeah, we'll just see how it goes. Anyway, we got wind blowing. I mean, he's coming out of this valley, right? So you gotta have some wind. I'm just trying to put some dark marks down so I figure out where the edge of Skitz's character is, you know. Before I really go in and start putting that shading in. I guess since this is getting blurry from the hands being in it, you know, it, it gets off focus. I can't, you know, a lot of times I'll, I'll use this hand for penciling and then I'll use this hand for shading, you know, but if I do that, it'll probably make the camera go out. So I'll probably just have to keep one hand going like I've been. But that's always cool. People like to see that, you know, using both hands at the same time. Again, I had a, I've talked about this before, but I've had, I had a, art teacher in high school she forced us to learn how to draw and stuff with our opposite hands so I never forgot that you know I still I do a lot of painting with my left hand and draw my right you know details with my right uh, uh, mark making with my left it's just um, something that I learned a long time ago from my art teacher she's like you should be able to draw with whatever hand it doesn't matter you need to learn it because it's about making your eye uh, see something and making your hand respond to what you're seeing and she said it shouldn't matter because like if you use your prominent hand all the time you want to you want to just do what's in your head and not look at what you're drawing you know like your 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 hand is confident in mark making but it's not seeing what you're drawing. So that's the whole point of that exercise is to see what you're drawing. Let's see here. Oh yeah, there we go. Let's go ahead and put that up. All y'all out there interested in the uh, in the campaign? Skits is still funding. We got what 20 days left, 19 days left at 12 grand. It'd be nice to get that thing up around, you know. $100,000 in 20 days. How about that, guys? Let's get it to 100000 in, in the, the next 20 days. That'd be cool. But, uh, yeah, we appreciate it if you go over there and back us. You know, if you like what you're seeing here, this, this book is going to be incredible, you know. We are not going to let you guys down. This one's going to blow your mind. Yeah, let me just... I'm just trying to build up my shading right now, build up uh, the lights and darks. 
And of course, Skits is right in the foreground as well as this big stone and this, so they will be the darkest on the page. But I'm just you gotta build it up to that though. You can't just go whole hog and make it dark all at once. That that's that's not what you do. You need to build it up. It's just like washes, you know, ink washes or something like that. You gotta build them up to where you want it to be. And uh, that's that's the best way to do this. Okay. Oh. Already incredible. Well, you know, we're we are getting there. We're we're getting there. Uh, I am starting to deal with stuff in the foreground, so I'm gonna switch over to this F here. Let's see uh, about getting some more darks in here, right? And I'll probably go to a smaller stump. These are called uh, stumps or uh, tortillons. That's the French word for it. I hope I'm saying that right. That's tortillon. Uh, you can use your finger. I mean, I usually just use my finger. But since I'm doing such big areas here with these panels, I'll just use a stump so I don't have a dirty, nasty finger. That's all dried out. <laughs> if you, uh, let me get a drink here. I'm starting to crack. Get my sweet tea. Skits loves sweet tea. That's his favorite drink. It's his drink of choice. But yeah, let's uh, start getting this darker here. And I do my sketching, you know, these sketches, like you see this here, with a harder pencil so that when I start doing the. Uh, the smudging here with the, the stump that way that doesn't go away the, the pencil underneath the harder the lead is the harder it is to actually get rid of the, the mark making that you've put down and we're starting to get some interesting marks and stuff now I'm starting to like this you know and I'm not afraid to just kind of make marks because a lot of this will kind of go away right now and it's okay if you you know you want to give it some edge and some excitement and like it's got movement to it, you know? I think that's really important. That's another thing that I like about this technique is you can get a lot of emotion in your line work. I think that's missing a lot of time when people just go with these bold ink makings and stuff. I, it's like I just... I just want really cool mark making, you know, excitement and movement in the line and in the shape. Let's go ahead. And... Another thing you'll want to do if you're doing this technique is you want to either wear a glove under your hand or make sure your hand doesn't get in the pencil work because you can get a nasty hand real quick. It gets covered in dirt and smudge and just all over the place, you know. Gets nasty real quick, so be cognizant. A lot of times, you know, you gotta work from the left side of the page to the right if you're right-handed, and opposite if you're left. And then you want to work um, from the top down, and then you know, cover it up. You know, sometimes if I'm working real detailed here, I'll have to cover up what's here, and I'll just use a piece of blank paper and cover it up while I'm working on it. But right now, I'm not really getting my hand in it, so it'll be all right. But again, for people who are just checking in, this is what we're planning to get to right here, right? But this is where we're at right now. Let's see here. Sweet tea. Yes, son, opinion on the Arnold Palmer. Well, here's the thing about an Arnold Palmer. You know, it Arnold Palmer made his way into the South and, uh, you know, with his golf career. And in the South, we call it a sweet tea lemonade. But Arnold Palmer, you know, he made it popular in the North and out West, so he gave it that name. You know, everyone's like, oh, that's an Arnold Palmer. It's like, no, we've always been doing that here in the South. We call it a sweet tea lemonade. Uh, you know, and it's like, whatever. But they're really good. If, if done right, they're really good. But I also like sweet tea and Kool-Aid mixed together. That's a good one, too. I like the sweet tea and Kool-Aid. 
But yeah, we call it sweet tea lemonade. But yes, they are fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, I just want a lot of emotion in this. And we got done. You know, I did, I think the first uh, seven, eight pages are all in an ink process, you know, doing pencils and inks. And those turned out really good. You want to go look at some of those. We just released the video underneath this, I believe. Uh, underneath this one in the timeline here on YouTube is um, has got one of those one of those uh, ink pieces I did and that that one turned out really, really good that one's nice so go check that out I did a timeline of this other piece I've been showing y'all here off to the side we'll be putting that out as a video at some point too yeah so go check that out Mm -hmm. All right, so don't really need to care too much about this stuff off to the side right now. I'll probably get more into that a little bit later. So for now, I just want <clears throat> to make sure that all the values are where I want them for the most part. And then we'll go in to make those details and stuff. But yeah, this is starting to come along pretty good there. Starting to like it. Yeah, let's uh, go into this guy now and start making some. Let me sharpen this pencil. I know a lot of people use the, a lot of people use those little handheld pencil sharpener. You know, I use an electric pencil sharpener, and a lot of people be like, "Oh, it wastes your pencil." It's like, yeah, but it gives you a real nice tip, and I don't have to worry about sitting there twisting a pencil inside a little sharpener. You know, I did that for a long time because I thought that was what you're supposed to do. And then I figured, you know, I don't care. I just want the pencil sharp. And the electric pencil sharpener does a fantastic job. You know. And the last video, my wife was saying, work smarter, work hard, and not harder. It's like, yeah. Smarter, just use pencil sharpeners on electric ones. They're good. It's like, yeah, you'll use up a little more of your pencil doing that, but hey, I love it. <laughs> it's quick and easy, and it does the job good. Yeah, there we go. This is great. This actually kind of reminds me of some of the early drawings I've seen of uh, of Akira. You know, they kind of have this feeling right here that I'm doing with these. That's nice. Akira's awesome. Um, I actually think I like the manga better than the anime, even though they're basically the same. But, yeah, whatever. All right. There we go. So if y'all have any questions, you know, want to know something, feel free to ask. We got El Gargoyle. Hey, El Gargoyle. Thanks for stopping by. We're just doing this uh, this drawing here for you, showing you all this art process I got. I'm trying to make people interested in, you know, a little something different. But, you know, skits is all about being different. You know, everything we do, we try and do it a little different than anyone else. That way we stand out and, uh, you know, we're not just out there trying to copy people you know i want to do something that's more traditional but then also have some different bounces to the storytelling so that's what that's what we're doing here we're just changing it up and giving people a little something different so let us know what you think <clears throat> what's the black star says Southern sweet tea is four cups of sugar, four tea bags, pretty much. Yeah, that's the super saturated solution. <laughs> Put the uh, link to the campaign back up there for you again. Leave that there for a minute while we work on this. Right. Yeah, it's nice and dark here. It's something that we're going to do here. I like using um, these kneaded erasers, you know, you just stretch it and everything. 
But what you can do is you can kind of take a rough edge like this and you can kind of scumble it around and get some nice mark making. Right. Use the eraser to make, uh, you know, make the drawing have a little more bounce to it, right? And then I'll go in with a smaller one as well to get even more mark making because, you know, the way I want this background to be is it's, you know, hazy. There's going to be some fog coming across, which the way I'll make my fog. Oh, drop my pencil. That's never good. There we go. Is I'll take this. I'll, I'll do some sweeps. Well, I'll just do it. I don't have the, all right. I got some sweeps through the through the trees here. And then I'll take this pencil and sort of swing it through here as well. All right. Where it's got that lid on there and that'll kind of give it that haziness that I want to go for and then I'll accentuate it a little bit later once I start getting more details but I mean this process right here is all about building it up right you want to start trying to separate things I want to get this thing to really pop from and stick out from the background so I need to have these hard edges Right, this dark. So I'm just going to keep working this dark into this character. Don't be afraid to just use your pencil however you want. You know, you can use it on an edge. You can use the sharp bits of it, you know. no wrong way to use a pencil and you can get so many different edges and feels out of a pencil it's incredible I just love working with pencil but I also love working with ink you can do basically the same type of stuff with ink but it's a little more permanent so you got to work a little different but I do a lot of dry brushing with the inks and that dry brushing is very much what you would see kind of in the way I'm doing this pencil work here. And the reason why I'm doing this pencil work this way is because the way I'm going to color it. It's, uh, it's going to be in that concept art style like you've been seeing in, the, in some of the work for skits. And uh, this, this complements that look really well. And it's the same way you'd work in the computer if you're doing that style of concept art. You know, you just work, you get your, get your uh, shapes and your, you know, and everything down, and, and get your um, um, all your blacks, your grays, and blacks and whites down, so it can stand out real nice and. You know, work well in space, in your space, and uh, that's just how you do it. You know, you build it up, you break it down, and that's all we're doing right here, you know, building it up and breaking it down. Yeah, there we go. That's looking pretty good. Bristol paper? Yeah, it's just a 11 by 17 Bristol board uh, paper. Yeah, that's all it is, El Gargoyle. That's, uh, that's pretty much all it is. Another pencil that I'll get into here, that I'll show you right now, is I really like these uh, Prismacolor Ebony's. I've been using these since I was in like junior high. These things are fantastic, you know, ebony pencil. And I think that might be like a 6B or something like that if you really want to be technical about it. 
but I'll use that at the end to really make the darks dark and uh, make them bounce. I mean, really, really bounce off the page. And then we'll go back in and make sure we got real good whites too with our hard eraser. But again, we're just trying to get everything to fit in there. Hey, Skits, nice work. Hey, thanks a lot, Ryan. That's awesome, man. Oh, yeah, uh, Blackstar mentions here, we're also going to help Richard Ombre launch his campaign on Saturday for his 12-hour stream for the last goodbye. Yeah, go ahead and check that out. We'll be on there at some point. We're not sure exactly the time yet, but go check him out, you know. It's, that should be like a lot of fun, you know what I mean? Well, yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for stopping by. Little gargoyle. What's going on? Yep, we're just trying to get these darks in here to really make it bounce against that background. You know, basically the rule of thumb when you're doing work like this is you want your darkest darks next to your lightest lights. So we're going to have white, real nice white all around here, and then we're going to have also our darkest dark right there around them. So I'm basically going to sit here and work on the main figure and just really make him pop, and then we'll work out from there. Get his hair flopping in the wind. Again, you know, I got these straps from the straight jacket. I got the hair nice and long. And these are just elements that you can use for storytelling. You know, you know the wind is whipping if the hair is just like, you know, blowing it all the way to one side of his head. Yeah, this is cool. And of course, you know, like I said, we'll go back in here and we'll pop some lights here and there, right? Really make it bounce. Can't have it all dark, you know, I gotta have a little bit of reflective light and stuff coming in from the side. Yeah, this is looking really good. You know, don't be afraid to try different things. I know there's like a particular way that most comic book, most comic booking is done. And it's like, you know, when I was at SCAD, this was actually something they did at Savannah College of Art and Design. I took a lot of uh, comic, uh, sequential art courses. You know, they hated it when you called it comic booking. They're like, it's sequential art. It's like, yeah, I know, but it's, come on, y'all are doing comic books. Let's just call it what it is. But you would always get mad if you said, comic booking but sequential art classes and uh, they would teach you different styles they'd be like experiment with your styles you know try and do something different you know make make it your own that's something i really liked about the classes there you know they're they're all about telling you to try different things don't just do the standard you know what you see in comic books try different stuff and i'm all about that let me get my small I got a little small one here now I'll do a little bit with that one because there we go I'm not going to do much here I kind of want to keep all that mark making if it looks cool but here and there you know I'll do a little something. let me sharpen this pencil too so I can start getting some real nice detail sorry for that loudness everybody also my whole uh scratchy chair here is like er, er, er. I got an old chair from the 50s it's a it's a uh, like an old uh, what is it called modern modern style mid-century modern and it's uh, it's a little crickety you know it's old it's oldie oldie but a goodie right, so you just kind of come back in here and add some really nice pop lines to make it jump off the page here and then we'll come back in with the ebony and really make it pop that's looking pretty good now let's also uh, start working some of that type of stuff into this yeah 
the stone right here. Always be cognizant of where your light's coming from, too, on these. That's really important. Lighting is everything. Oh. Get this ebony mounts wire. Really bring out the edges here. Yeah, this is starting to look pretty good. Starting to look good. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Thanks a lot. Yep. Thanks a lot, you guys, for uh, being there in the chat. Thanks, Verse Films. Thanks, Black Star, Ryan Wynn. Yep. <laughs> Tough stuff for races for the win. Good one, man. Yeah. Let's see if I missed anything back in here. Yeah, we got a few. Hey, everyone. This is an actual page. That's right, man. That's right. Yeah, we're just chilling today, trying to work on this page, give y'all something fun to look at here with skits, you know, go share out skits, back us if you can, get that three book journey, remember we got three books, uh, you know, three variant covers with three variant storylines, I mean, how cool is that, three variant storylines, ain't no one else doing that, we are the only ones, remember that, we're the only ones doing that three variant story. Oh, yeah, this is awesome. Just trying to show people a different way of doing comic booking, you know? It's not all about, oh, let's just do the same line work as the uh, image guys from back in the early 90s. It's, you know, it's like, come on, man, let's... let's do your own thing. Try something else. You know? And I like traditional art, so I'm going to do things a little more traditional arty. But I also like some of that line work, too. So I incorporate that into a lot of my stuff as well. Don't be afraid to just put down a pencil mark and leave it. You know, that's what I'm doing right here. I'm just like, you know what? Bam. Leave it. That's fine. It looks good. It's, uh... Put that edge in there and then we'll I love confident mark making and pencils. And that's what I'm trying to do right here. I'm just like, okay, I know this got to be filled in, so I'm just gonna pop it in there. Bam. And it doesn't have to be more than that because that's not the important part. What's important is right over here. This is what it's important in this piece right here. Let's go back to our F pencil and keep building up these areas here. All right, yeah. And remember what I said, like the closer we get to the main character, which is right here, the more details we want around them because your eye will naturally go to where there's details. You know, that line, that mark making that we're starting to do here, your eye is naturally going to go there. So that's where we want to keep all of our mark making. All right. Let me sharpen this pencil again. Ah. Again, we got Black Star in the chat, like dropping them links for us. Thanks. Appreciate you. Appreciate your wife. Thanks for being there for us. Thanks for being there for me. Appreciate all of it. Need all the help I can get. Yeah. 
remember what I said earlier. Your darkest darks next to your lightest lights. That's what you want to go for. And this right around here is going to be some of the lightest lights right around here. All right. Get some of that scumbling and mark making with the with the eraser. That'll work wonders once you start coloring it. It's gonna be really, really cool. Yeah, so when you look at this, think, uh, you know, some of the work that Dave McKean did on uh, on Arkham Asylum. He did that book, Arkham Asylum, I think is what it's called. Dave McKean did. He did a lot of work like this and that. And that's something that I really enjoyed back in the 90s. You know, he's just out there doing what he thinks is right. You know, he's a traditional artist. And he really liked making line work like this, you know. I do too. <clears throat> Let me get my ebony again. Yeah, let me really pop some of these spots here. Pop that collar on skits. There we go. Now this uh, buckle is shiny metal, but it always has some of the darkest darks on it. You know, you'll have really nice lights right there on the buckles, but then it'll also be really, really dark. So, something to remember, you know, look, look for reference, you know, look at life, but always look to comic books for energy in your, in your layouts and how you draw things, but Make sure you look at real life too to get the to get that nice look, you know, that realisticness into it. You know, don't be afraid to do things realistically. You know, uh, Todd McFarlane says, "Learn to draw from comic books." And it's like, yeah, that's true, but at the same time, I say, you know, you got to look at life and draw from life at the same time. You know? You gotta know how to draw things and make sure that it looks correct. Because it, it can only help you. It can only help you. <clears throat> Heavy metal. Yeah. Talk about Rorschach. What's there to say about it? It's like they're beating, beating this you know, series into oblivion, the Watchmen stuff, I mean, jeez, just leave it be, Alan Moore, I mean, he did it, and he was like, yeah, there's nothing more to be done, and then they're like, ah, we can do some stuff, let's milk some more money out of this, you know, and they can do that, you know, it's DC's property, even though Alan Moore's mad about that, you know, he expected the property to revert back to him at some point, but it ain't going to happen. They've made way too much money off that thing. In this contract, it said if if uh, Watchmen goes out of print for like a year, I believe it was, that the characters would revert back to Alan Moore. Well, that never happened because it was so awesome. You know, they ain't going to let it revert back to him. So he's you know, probably pretty mad about that. I don't, I don't blame him. You know, they tried to get him to work on the movie, and he was like, nah. Then they tried to get him to work on uh, on the new books, and he was like, nah. He's like, I, I did enough on it. it. It's good just the way it is. So, there you go. So, we got Rorschach coming out now, which I believe Rorschach's dead. So, maybe this will take place before he's dead. I'm not sure. So, 
clear it up and looks great now. All right. I need to get a better arm to put this on. Every time I touch the screen to put up a, something, it gets all wobbly. But that's just how it goes, I guess. Now this look right here also is very reminiscent, in my opinion, of how the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles original series looked. You know, it had that raw, rough edge, you know, it was rough and raw and just full of energy. And that's really what I want with skits, is to have that type of feel to it. It's like rough and tumble and full of energy. Even though, it, you know, you can't really, you know, we're just sitting here barely talking and being pretty sh shy and nonchalant about this. But it's like, it's still, it should have energy, you know. The, the mark making should have energy. Even though I'm not very energetic necessarily right now. You know, I'm not like jumping up and like, ah, you like you see some interviews. I'm like all over the place. I'm super excited. But you really can't do art like that, you know, necessarily. All right, let's, uh, let's try using some of the... A little bit less. There you go. Put some highlights back into it there. And I can always accentuate that a little bit in the computer, or I can come back in with a sharp eraser. Like I can take the edge of this eraser and take my X-Acto blade to it and put little sharp edges on it. And then I can go in here and really hit some accent points at the end. That'll make it look really cool. But for now, I'm really liking how this is turning out. And of course, I never, I'm never completely finished with this, you know, like I'll get it to a point right here while we're talking where I'm like, okay, this is, you know, this is pretty good. But then I'll sit and I'll look at it, you know, leave it for about an hour or two and I'll come back and I'll be like, oh, I need to, I need to do that. I need to do this, you know, which is fine. So, uh, a little bit there, a little bit here. So, Dang, razor blade, the eraser, some art school hacks. Yeah, man. It's like you want a real nice, cool, sharp. I mean, you can try with your kneaded, you know, your gum eraser. We always call this a gum, but I think it's actually called a kneaded eraser. You can use that, you know, push it into a little point, but it, you know, it's mushy. It ain't gonna. <clears throat> so you can try and do it with this, you know, just get little, little wisps, all right? But if you really want some sharp bits, yeah, take a, one of your hard erasers and just cut it, cut the edge down and sharpen it with an X-Acto blade and you'll get a nice edge to it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me get a drink of my sweet tea here. I'd like to thank y'all for stopping by, man. This has been awesome. I'm still going to keep going here. Ain't going nowhere. Blaster slash it comics and reviews. Hey, everyone. Hey, man. Thanks for stopping by. Let me know what you think of uh, the drawing techniques we're doing here. This is for Skits, The Sun, book one. It's on Indiegogo right now. Go over and give it a look. Check out the art. This is for the book. It's actually going to have three different art styles in it. 
and this is pencils and concept art style. So you'll see some stuff on there that looks like traditional concept art, like you see in video games and uh, and uh, movies and stuff like that. Well, what I'm doing right here is I'm actually doing a pencil style that's very reminiscent of that, and it'll. This is the base for the coloring for those types of things. So let's just go ahead and pull out some of the whites around this. Out. So let me get my harder eraser and try and get some of them edges. Right. So I can get a little separation there. There we go. Yeah, you can get all sorts of nice mark making in there with the erasers. You know, use everything. Whatever you can find, just go ahead and use it and make it work for you. It don't really matter. <clears throat> All right, so let's try and put a little bit of details and you know, little wisps and stuff in these trees. All right. I'll give it that edge. So it ain't completely floating in space. Right. Mm -hmm. That way we tell you exactly where the edge of the tree line is when I go back in and color it digitally. But we'll also leave some areas a little wispy, so I'd put that, uh, you know, that haze in there, right? And then maybe we'll I always like to when I do these scenes to throw some some birds in in the background, you know. It's a good point of reference, you know. Shows like distance and. Just good, just good storytelling elements. And I uh, go back over it. So, yeah, that's looking cool. And remember the way we started this drawing, which is this. <laughs> It says a video game would be fantastic. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. I'd rather do a video game than uh, a movie or a TV series or anything. Pigs in space. There's a there's a callback for you. Pigs in space. People who are old enough to have watched the original Muppet Show. <laughs> original Muppet Show was crazy. They had some cool stuff on there. I still, you know, I didn't really get to see much of that stuff because I didn't really have much TV around as a kid, you know. Like, my parents had one from time to time, like a little little bitty thing, like a 13-inch. And it had, uh, they had like two channels we'd get, like NBC, Fox, or something like that. I don't know. But I never really paid much attention to it. I care less. But... Every now and then I'd be over at Grandma's and she had all the channels and I, I'd watch the Muppet show. And I saw that eggs in space. And then there was that one dude I always wondered about. He had the, he'd hold up the fish. If you, the bomb guy, he always had that fish. He's, you know, like you sleep with the fishes, I guess. That dude was always cool. I liked him. <laughs> I always wondered what that dude was doing. He just like, got by a fish. Visually, it's real funny to look at and cool and interesting, which is really what we like, you know. Okay. Don't want to get too dark with uh, these trees, you know. 
I want to put a little bit of a little something in there. All right, make it jump a little bit. Back to the ebony pencil here. Put this on this mark, make it on skits. And we're going to make sure foreground characters really pop out at you. You know that you, you know they're in the foreground. We got our foreground elements, our midground elements, and then our background, right? Although I still feel like we probably need to get a little more separation between these. They're all kind of on the same level. So we'll probably go a little bit darker with it. And of course that's something I don't have to do here on the page. I can also do that in the computer. Yeah. When I'm coloring it. But let's go ahead and put a little bit of pop. You know, bring it a little more to the foreground. There we go. <clears throat> and if you notice, I'm also using, you know, traditional pencils. Not, uh... I'm not using uh, lead holders and stuff like that. Like you know, a lot of people, they try and use these, uh, you know, these mechanical pencils. And I love them. You know, I use them in my sketchbooks. But you can only pretty much get one line out of it. You know, for this, I want a pencil I can lay down on an edge and get all sorts of line work out of it. So that's uh, important in my opinion. And of course, everything you hear here is just my opinion as to how to do art. You know, I did go to art school. I do have a Bachelor of Fine Arts, but I mean, that doesn't really mean much. It just means I, I took four years and got a degree, which is, uh, you know, it is important. But you can learn everything that I learned right here on the Internet. The question is, are you going to put the time in? You know, that's the big thing. You just got to put the time in. Uh, get that ebony pencil. Make them darks a little darker here. This is awesome. This looks really good. I'm super excited about doing this style for, for skits. I think it's uh, going to be time well spent. I really do. Once we get the color and stuff on it, I think it's really going to blow you all away. You're going to be like, whoa, that turns to that. It's like, yeah, that's that's what we got going on here. There we go. Yeah, that's awesome. It's really awesome. Remember, when you're composing a panel or a scene or comic booking, you know, always look at the overall picture. You know, when you're laying everything out, look at the overall picture, look at your foreground, middle ground, background. In every panel, try and have that, unless it's just a close-up on the face or a close-up on something. Then it's more about the dramatic of a close-up. But if you're doing stuff, don't forget the backgrounds. Remember, everything happens and exists somewhere. You know, it doesn't all just exist nowhere. And sometimes you need to break it up and just do a panel that has nothing in the background. You know, that you need to 
the eye to just kind of move on and do stuff like that. But think about your backgrounds, man. It's so important. So important. So whenever I do all my stuff, I always compose it in, uh, you know, completely as, you know, a, a drawing in foreground, middle ground, background. And I, I just lay it all out and make sure that all of it's working together. And uh, and then I go from there. I don't even care if the drawing is correct or anything. I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to compose the, the picture. That's all. <laughs> Therapeutic for today. Yes, it is. It is. This is some good stuff. I hope everyone out there is enjoying this because I really enjoy doing this. This is exactly what I need to be doing right now. Let me sharpen this pencil here. Now, the reason why I use these Tombows, in my opinion, the lead in a Tombow is about the best you can get. Now, of course, that's just my opinion. I've been using different pencils for ages, you know, since, uh, since the late 80s, I guess. I've been using different art pencils. And these Tombows, in my opinion, are about the best you can get. They, they really, really got something special going on with their product. There we go. That ain't too bad. That's starting to look pretty good now. You know, I need to get some more separation between uh, these foreground elements and that background element. So this is doing, this is doing good to me uh, also. Let's work on this a little bit more. Yeah. Whenever I'm drawing, you always just see the one hand, but I got like all sorts of stuff in my other hand. Or if like earlier, I might be using one hand to draw, one hand to erase, one hand to draw, one hand to do uh, to do the um, the tortillon, the stump. So, and then something that can be done, and I'm just you know putting these shapes in here right now. But what I could do is I could go back in here in these little areas here and put little rocks and little elements and stuff. I mean, I'm, this is very basic here, and I want to keep it basic. I don't want too much here because of the way I'm going to color it. But also, the other panels on the page are a little more detailed. You know, let me pull this up for you guys. We got, obviously, a lot of stuff going on in this panel, which is the next panel. And we got a bunch going on here, and then even more here. This one's a real detailed panel. So I'm kind of leaving this loose and big. Oh, let me pull that down. I'm leaving this loose and big, and then I'm going to tighten it up a little bit here. And then I'll probably go to loose and fast here because I want the camera to move. On. Let me, and I want the, let me get some of this stuff out of my hands. I got like so much stuff in my hand. But I want this panel to move really fast, so I got a lot of detail here, but it's just going to be real loose and exciting mark making, kind of like how this top one was that we just got done with. And this one will be really detailed. I'm going to go in with a lot of fine mark making with the pencil on this one and really flesh this out. So it's like I want the eye to move at a certain pace, right? So I want cool and fast establishing. You know, moving kind of a little bit slower to see kind of where he's slinging through the trees here. And then I want it to move fast because he's jumping right here over this tree area. You know, he's like jumping down. And then this one, he's standing still. And I want the eye to stand on it and to stay here for a little bit. So there's going to be more details in this one. I'll take a little more time with it. So that's how you, you know, move your, your eye through a page, you know. It's like you just kind of 
do details and make your eyes sit there and look at stuff and then uh, move them across the page really quick, you know. But anyway, that was uh, the page I, I sent out the other day that I worked on. And here's one done in a similar style. And uh, yeah, so that's going to be it for today. I just wanted to show you all how to do one of those pages in that style because everyone was really interested. They saw it on Twitter and was like, wow, you know, that's cool. So, you know, follow us over on Twitter. It's at Skits Comic, and then also you got uh, Karshina's channel over there. Karshina, uh, you'll have to put it in this Karshina J, something underscore J. Anyway, she'll put it up there. And then uh, Come Get Some too. That one's uh, the Come Get Some page. We got a new Come Get Some coming really, really soon. Um also, if you're here on the YouTube channel, you know what it is. It's, you know, Skits Comic on YouTube. But uh, go check out the Indiegogo page. That's where, let me put the, the link up there. It's uh, over on Indiegogo, Skits Comic. Um, we got the three book journey. Very, very unique. You got three books three with the three variants covers on it. And there's three variant stories in there. See, most people, they just give you, like, variant covers, and they want you to buy them. We're doing variant covers, but we're doing variant stories inside it. I mean, it's really, really unique and exciting. It's completely different, you know. It's something that I felt like needed to be done because I don't buy variant covers myself. So I was like, well, let's give people an incentive to buy it by doing variant stories so that's what we did we did some variant stories and we're super excited about that you know uh, we're doing really good right now we got uh we're a little over twelve thousand, and we want to keep that going so go on over there get a book or get the three book journey three book journey is also wrapped in a belly band uh it's signed and numbered wrapped in a belly band it's an awesome awesome deal and if you're on the uh, mailing list, you got that same deal for a cheaper price. Plus, the belly band is going to be hand drawn by me. You know how cool is that? Get some hand drawn action. That's what I'm talking about. Let me uh, just send some stuff. I'll, I'll noodle this a little bit more, but uh, for the most part, that's just done. We'll call that a done panel. But uh, thanks for stopping by. We really enjoyed having you here. Um, Blasted or stash it comics and reviews. I think this is the first time I've ever seen you here. Thanks for stopping by, man. Really appreciate it. It was great having you in the chat and to watch this stuff, you know. We really, really do appreciate it. Christopher Jackson. Hey man. Thanks for stopping by, man. We really appreciate it. We you just got us here on the tail end, you know. And uh, go back and check it out. I think you really like this uh, this style of doing things. It's something different in comic booking, but it's going to look really good once I do all the coloring on it. It's going to be great, great, great stuff. Yeah, hey man, doing some sketches, cool man. Share it, you know, share it to our Twitter. We, we always like to see all types of cool stuff. All right, man. Next time it is. All right, you guys, have a good one. We'll see you next time.